Imagine hitting rock bottom on a day that should have been your triumph. That's exactly what happened to me. A critical work deadline was missed, not because I was ill or there was a family emergency. No, I missed it because I had spent the entire night engrossed in pornography and masturbation. It was a wake-up call, a glaring neon sign that my private vice had evolved into a full-blown crisis. In the beginning, it was easy to brush it off as a minor issue, a distraction, nothing more. I was in denial, convincing myself that I was still in control. After all, I was succeeding at work, maintaining strong relationships and on the surface appeared to be leading a happy life. But behind closed doors, it was a different story. The truth was, I was battling with a habit that was slowly but surely consuming every aspect of my life. It was like a dark shadow, lurking in the corners of my mind, always present, always waiting. It was an addiction to pornography and masturbation that was eating away at my mental health, straining my relationships and severely hampering my productivity. Month one was all about awareness and commitment. The first month was the hardest. It was a battle between me and my old self, a struggle of willpower and determination. The first step was becoming aware of my triggers and habits. I started to notice patterns like how I turned to pornography and masturbation when I was stressed or bored. It was a coping mechanism, an escape from reality, but it was also a prison. Commitment was the next big step. I had to commit to breaking free from this habit. I had to commit to myself. It was scary. The thought of stepping out of my comfort zone, of changing a habit that had become a part of my daily routine, was daunting. But I knew that if I wanted to regain control of my life, I needed to make this commitment. I started by setting small, achievable goals. Instead of saying I'd quit forever, I told myself I'd quit for a day. And when I achieved that, I extended it to two days, then three, and so on. Each small victory was a boost to my confidence, a testament to my willpower. I also sought support from others. I joined online support groups where I found people who were going through the same struggles. They offered advice, shared their experiences, and most importantly, they understood what I was going through. I also started therapy, which helped me understand my addiction on a deeper level. It helped me understand myself. Throughout this month, I kept reminding myself why I was doing this. I thought about the missed deadline, the disappointment in my boss's eyes, the guilt and shame I felt. I thought about how I wanted to feel confident, in control, free. And every time I was tempted to revert to my old habits, I reminded myself of these things. By the end of the first month, I had developed a better understanding of my addiction and was committed to overcoming it. This commitment wasn't just a promise to myself, but a vow to regain control of my life, to become a better version of myself. And though the journey was tough, I knew I was tougher. This was just the beginning but I was ready for whatever came next. In month two, my focus shifted towards developing healthy habits. Now you might be thinking this sounds easier said than done, and you wouldn't be wrong. Changing habits is a challenge, especially when you're dealing with something as addictive as pornography and masturbation. But remember, the first step towards change is the hardest, and I had already taken that step in month one. This month, I made a conscious decision to replace my unhealthy habits with healthy ones. I started to exercise regularly, focusing on physical activities that I enjoyed. Running, swimming, weightlifting, you name it. The physical exertion not only helped me keep my mind off my addiction, but it also improved my overall health and well-being. But physical activity was only one piece of the puzzle. I also focused on my mental health. I started meditating, practicing mindfulness, and journaling my thoughts and feelings. These activities helped me understand my triggers and taught me how to cope with them in a healthy way. I also made sure to maintain a balanced lifestyle. I kept a regular sleep schedule, ate a balanced diet, and made time for hobbies and social activities. I realized that my addiction had been a crutch, a way to escape from stress and boredom. By filling my days with positive and constructive activities, I gave myself less time to succumb to my old habits. The journey wasn't easy. And there were days when I stumbled. There were days when I fell back into old patterns. But each time I picked myself up, reminded myself of my commitment and pushed forward. Each victory, no matter how small, strengthened my resolve and brought me closer to my goal. I won't lie and say that month two was a walk in the park. It wasn't. It was hard, it was challenging, but it was also empowering. I was taking control of my life one day at a time. As I bid farewell to month two, I had begun to see a change. I had developed healthier habits, and the addiction 
had started to loosen its grip on me. A month three was about embracing the new lifestyle. As the third month dawned, the changes I had been implementing were no longer just habits. They were becoming a part of my lifestyle. I was transforming, and the changes were far more profound than I'd ever imagined. My mornings were no longer sluggish. I woke up feeling refreshed and energized, ready to take on the day. The time I'd once wasted on pornography and masturbation was now being channeled into productive activities. I was reading more, exercising regularly, and even took up cooking. These activities were not only engaging, but also gave me a sense of accomplishment. In the third month, the benefits of my new lifestyle started to become evident. I was not only physically healthier, but mentally stronger too. I was more focused at work, my thinking was clearer, and I was able to handle stress better. I started meeting my deadlines, and my performance improved significantly. My relationships also started to improve. I was spending more time with my friends and family, and the guilt and shame that once consumed me started to fade. I was becoming more confident, more outgoing, and more in tune with the people around me. I also noticed a shift in my attitude towards myself. I was no longer a slave to my desires, but in control of my actions. I was starting to appreciate and respect myself more. I started to see myself not as a victim of addiction, but as a survivor a fighter, a champion. Embracing this new lifestyle was not easy. There were days when I was tempted to revert to my old habits, but I reminded myself of the progress I had made and the life I was building. The third month was a testament to my resilience and determination. By the end of month three, I had not only beaten the addiction, but also embraced a healthier, happier lifestyle. I was proud of the person I had become, and I was excited about the future. My journey was far from over, but I knew I was on the right path. I had reclaimed my life, and I was ready to face whatever came my way. By the end of month three, I had not only beaten the addiction, but also embraced a healthier, happier lifestyle. This journey was not easy, but it was worth every struggle. Those words are no exaggeration. The path to overcoming the grip of pornography and masturbation was strewn with challenges, but with every step, I felt myself growing stronger, not just physically, but also mentally and emotionally. Let's take a moment to recap this journey. In the first month, it was all about awareness and commitment. Acknowledging the problem was the first hurdle, and it was no small one. It was about looking my darkest secrets in the eye and deciding to change. Commitment was the key. It was a promise I made to myself, a promise to strive for better, a promise I had to keep. The second month was about developing healthy habits, replacing the old with the new. It was about finding alternatives to the time I spent on pornography and masturbation. I began reading more, exercising, and spending time in nature. These habits didn't just help me distract myself, but they also improved my overall well-being. By the third month, I was embracing a new lifestyle. I was no longer just surviving, I was thriving. I found joy in things I had neglected before. My relationships improved and I was more productive at work. But most importantly, I realized that I was in control of my life, not my habits. And here's the thing, every journey is unique. Your path might not look exactly like mine, and that's okay. The important thing is to take that first step. If you're struggling with similar issues, don't hesitate to seek help. Join our Telegram channel through the link provided. Remember, you're not alone in this. Remember, it's never too late to take control and make a change. Thank you for joining me on this journey. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Stay strong, stay committed and remember, you're not alone.